I guess kind of the first question, I mean, 18 for 18, all your guys, I mean, what's it like for you to kind of get this whole thing done, be able to talk about it and do it in what was essentially a drama-free day? Yeah, we're um, really, really excited about these guys. I think, you know, we got a bunch of great kids that are big-time players, and that's usually our mission. And, uh, you know, we went to 10 different states, which is exactly our footprint. You know, it's it's out here in the West. It's in Texas. You usually have a wild card somewhere in the one, uh, you know, with a connection somehow, some way. And Jackson Sermon out there in Tennessee. And so he's he's coming back home here. And and it's just, you know, I think we, we got the, the position needs that we were hoping to get um, and really good players to, to go along with that. And so, you know, we're, we're excited. Um, I think one of the things that we pay close attention to, um, you know, the average GPA, and I'm not talking about I'm talking about the core GPA. I'm talking about math, science, and it's the average for this crew is over 3.0. And so, you know, all those things that we always talk about in recruiting, like how we put this puzzle together, really shows up with this crew. There were six players that won state championships, two Gatorade state players of the year, four U.S. Army All-Americans, one Under, Army, uh, Under Armour uh, game participant, and five Polynesian Bowl participants. So these are all like really, really good players and really good kids that come from good families and we're really excited about them. People talk in the NFL draft about getting guys for need versus best available talent. How do you balance that out as far as looking at your existing roster and say, okay, we need this position versus just getting the best fit for you? Yeah. You know, it's probably similar to the to the NFL. I mean, we're, we're definitely recruiting need, but we're not going to pass up a guy that we think can come in here and be a difference maker. And I just think the balance of getting these good players that we needed at these positions um, worked out really well. And so we feel, you know, we feel right. Um, we're right where we need to be. Um, I think this thing is probably, you know, there's still another signing date. Um, I think we're... We're probably 90, 85 percent done, um, and so if nothing else happened, we would still feel pretty good. Um, but we'll see where this thing goes. Chris, I know you're not in the stars per se, but when you have two four-star quarterbacks in the same class, you have to kind of massage that. Is that odd? I just wish you'd say we have two really good players at that position. Let me start over there. Okay. We got two really good players at the quarterback. Position. Yeah. Do you have to kind of talk about those? Is, it, is that odd to have two guys like that come in together? Do you have to kind of massage that situation with each kid? Um, you know, that's a little bit different at the quarterback position. But I think these guys love Washington. I think they love what the program's all about. I think they like our style of offense. And I think they're competitors. And so that's what it's always all about, just worrying, do you fit this place? Are you a competitor? And uh, let's go to work. And I think that's the mentality of those guys, and that's how it should be. Did you go in? It's so rare to get two quarterbacks in, in any class. Um, I think you've had it once in your, your career, especially, especially, like you said, two so highly regarded. Um, you know, was that the plan coming in, or is there special circumstances in this case? We're always looking at this. You know, we're always looking. I, I, you know, I have to look at every, every room. I have to look at the running back room. And you got to look ahead down the line. And there's certain things you can kind of see and predict happening. You don't know what the future holds for any of this. But you gotta, you got to make sure that you feel like, and a lot of this is kind of future. And so that's, that's how we recruit. We're recruiting for the here and now, but you're also looking a year or two ahead and going, okay, well, how are we going to be sitting here? And so that's why we, we wanted to get to in this class. Coach, can you talk about, you know, recruiting is competitive and you beat Alabama in a linebacker in all eight. Oh, can you talk a little bit about his recruitment and how that all came about? Yeah. Um, all eight, Caho. Um, he, he came out here and, and visited us this summer and his parents weren't able to come. He just able, he came himself and you could tell right away, like he just clicked with this place. 
Um, he just really did. And when he was getting ready to leave, he was just like, I just need to get my parents out here. I need to have my parents see this and meet you guys and see what you're all about. And that just never changed for him, you know, and recruiting can be hectic. And then you have all sorts, sorts of parties coming in and, you know, kind of muddying the waters and all that. And it gets confusing for everybody. And then when we were able to get his, him and his parents back out here on an official visit, I mean, he was, he just, I think he's one of the, the guys from the start. He just knew in his heart, like, this is where he wanted to come. And his parents, you know, saw this and saw how he reacted to this place. And that's, to me, what this recruiting is all about. You know, I think there's a lot of things, like people think early in the recruiting process, oh, if this place ever offered me, this is where I'm going to go. But guys that really do the process correctly, a lot of times that isn't, that isn't the place. You know, you think this emblem on the side of the helmet is what it's all about, but then you got to do your homework and figure out where do I fit the best. And Ole fits us. If, Kid like that, how competitive is that for recruiting? Every one of these guys is not this guy. Every one of these guys could go almost anywhere. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, our games are competitive. The recruiting's just as competitive. As the, as the, pitch, as the pitch evolves over the past few years, you know, you've been to playoff, going to the Fiesta Bowl now. It's different than when you first got here when you guys were, you know, kind of rebuilding a little bit. I'm curious, coaches, when you talk to the recruits, is it different now than versus maybe a couple of years ago? It's not any different in terms of what we say to them. Um, yeah, I mean, I think they can figure the football out. I mean, when I'm talking to them, I, I'm not really talking about football most of the time. I'm just talking about this place and what we're all about and those type of things. And, um, you know, I think the rest speaks for itself. Mr. First second period. Period. You good? Yeah. Thanks. First second period, you threw it. Um, just how to go. What's that? Signing day. Timing for the signing day. Yeah. Uh, you know, I kind of do. It's very, very hectic when you're uh, preparing for this bowl game. And then you're out and you're making sure. But it is nice to have this day a bit earlier. A lot of these kids been committed for a whole, whole long time. A whole long time, that, that doesn't really sound right. For a long, long time. And uh, you know, we'll see. We'll kind of see how this next phase goes. You know, it, it kind of seems to me like, and I think everybody's predicting different things, but it kind of seems to me like this is the new February. You know, that there's always going to be a handful of kids that maybe don't sign here, but I think going forward, guys, figure it out and move on. I think a lot of the guys are so sick of it. You know, they're sick of this stuff that they just like, please give me the paper so we can move on. I, I know you're not a rankings guy at all in any capacity. Not even kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, when you were at Boise, you get like a 75th recruiting class. And Loved it. To become number I hope this one's country. 85th. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is 10th right now, which would be your best ever. Does, does, does that mean anything to you in, in terms of, hey, listen, or, or what does that say about your program in terms of the way everyone looks at this class? No, it doesn't. Um, what does mean to me a lot is these guys on here, and I know, you know, I know as much about these kids as players and, and people as I can without getting to coach them and be around them and put them through the grind. And I feel so good about this. You know, we, we all looked at this, our coaches, and it's like, wow. You know, that's, that's when I think you know it's pretty good. You look at it and you just feel good about, that's a good player, that's a good player, that's a good player. Yes, he's a really good dude. Yes, he's a really good, you know, that's, and I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know anything about these rank, you know, I, and I really don't care because what I care about is what we do on the field, what we do in the classroom. And I just know these guys really fit us. I know it's important to, you know, to, uh, to other people in terms of all this stuff, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't matter to me. Do you think your success over the past couple of years has, has sold kids in, in, in a way that maybe you wouldn't have a couple of years ago? Well, I think you got to have a track record. You know, I think you got to have a great um, product. And this university is, I mean, that's why I came here. I think it's second to none. And so what else are we talking about? 
because I think it's the same for the coaches as it is for the kids. You're at an elite academic institution. You're going to play the best football in the country. You have a chance to compete on a national scale. I mean, so, and then we have a unique philosophy in terms of what we're trying to do with these kids, even, you know, outside of football. And so for the right guys, I think this is a rare and unique place. And I think, I think a lot of these guys saw that. When you look at your versatility. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, I was going to ask, when you look at your versatility at receiver, it seems like you have a lot of guys who can do a lot of different things. I mean, what's kind of discussion on this group and what they can be? Because it seems like, again, just versatility is the, the big thing that jumps out. Well, yeah. I mean, we feel, I mean, I could talk about each one of these groups, and I'm not going to, Kim. Um, <laughs> But the receiver group, um, you know, most of these guys have been recruited to us for, uh, committed to us for a long time. And, you know, Spike, Spiker and Osborne, um, you know, we've been around those guys for a long, long time and watching camps and up here and all this. And then you see what they've done. I mean, those guys are exciting guys. And Trey Lowe, I mean, he's very, very similar in terms of some things he did in high school to Chico. You know, he's a running back that can catch the heck out of the ball. He's an ex exciting kick returner. I mean, he's electric. And so I think it's a great, you know, it's a great blend. I mean, we got these quarterbacks and, you know, I think we're always going to have good quarterbacks and we just need some guys when we get them the ball, can get something done with it and we feel good about that. Is there anybody on this list of really good players? <laughs> kind of jumps off the page to you. Is it a kid that can maybe make a contribution right away? Anybody? That well, um, I think there's a handful of these guys. I really do. I don't know who that is. Um, but I think we've played as many as nine or ten true freshmen since we've been here in any one class. And it's usually about, you know, four to six. And I think we'll probably have the same thing here. Yeah. Is the biggest advantage, honestly, for you guys with this early signing period of just not having to hang on to a guy for another month and a half and fend off other – is that the biggest advantage for you? I, I think it – yeah. I mean, I, I think it just brings it to a head quicker. And I do think that there's going to be um, – you know, time and money saved on this thing where you're just out and about. But I think it kind of allows us to move forward. Um, the recruiting never stops. I mean, we're, we're on to the next class and the next class behind that already. And so that can move us forward. So it's not like when January comes here, we're not out back really working hard on this thing. But, uh, you know, I think time will tell how everybody likes this. But I think at this point, I feel okay about it. Would you be in favor of potentially even moving it up earlier? Some have talked about maybe an August period before the senior season starts, and then come back and say, well, that gives coaches time to take off. And if you wait till now, you're, you're pretty solid with who's staying and who's not. We, all that. Right. Would you be in favor of a, an earlier signing period? I could be. You know, that was kind of my thought early on. Um, you know, it's a, it's a more than an act of Congress to get anything passed in, you know, the NCAA and football and rules. So I don't know how fast any of these rules will be changing, but I think everybody will see where we are and digest it and, and see if it's uh, an improvement to, to what we had. MJ Allen is the biggest guy yeah. ever recruited. If you want to go down the rest <laughs> I mean, the whole line, you know, it's on offense, it starts with those guys. And I think it's a unique cr crew as well. I mean, MJ is, um, he is, he is an impressive uh, looking individual. And he's an impressive individual. And Mateo and Vic, I mean, those guys are, you know, you got your kind of prototype tackle, uh, Mateo, and, and Vic can kind of be a swing guy. You know, I think he's he's ornery enough to play inside, but athletic enough to play outside. And I think Coach Huff did a great job with those guys, and so that's an impressive group too. And if you're going to throw out one guy in each group and give me a talk about that, it ain't going to work either, so. Chris, obviously you're, 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 you're really obviously very excited about these guys. Uh, Montana State announced uh, Bryce Turk has left it. Can you talk a little bit about that or, or any other players that, that maybe? So, yeah, you know, um, you know, this whole thing is about getting to the place where you can play and get significant playing time. And so there'll be some guys that, you know, move on. And, um, you know, Bryce is a – He's a great kid and really good student and 
So, you know, we're all about that when a guy can go and really contribute. I mean, this thing is so hard and it goes so fast and it's such a short part of our, you know, our life that it's like we got to make sure that um, we get to where we can, you know, really accomplish the things we want to accomplish. So. How comfortable are you with your running back depth, especially if you were to lose Miles? Well, yeah. Um, you know, so that's always um, an interesting component at a couple different positions, you know, in terms of some of our guys. Um, but we'll be fine. Um, you know, I think you take a guy like, I think we have some good backs in this program. And then signing Richard, we feel really, really good about. Um, I think he's a, he's a good, hard-nosed football player. Um, and then you have a guy like, um, you know, like Chico and Trelo that are receivers, but those guys are so versatile that we can always do some things there. So, you know, we're always looking at this big picture and, you know, you always think you're, you're good until a few things happen and depth is never what you want. And it's great at one position and all of a sudden the injury bug hits and it's not where you want it and you just adjust and go. But we're always playing the puzzle. Well, what if this happened? Who could we move here? Who could we do this? But I think we feel good about where we are. Chris, the guys that could leave early, do you have a feel? I get a feel, but it's not time to talk about, you know, any of that. we got a big game to play. and. And you know, I feel I feel good um, where we are in that whole thing. And it's like I say, it's not a, it's not about feeling good for for Washington. I mean, that, that's like what's the best thing for these kids? I always think that in in uh, that next level situation. And in regards to the game itself, with guys like Levon, Dante, and I guess even Hunter, is there a chance we can see? Yeah, yeah, those guys? yes, there is. Yeah, all, all of them are all of them are practicing, um, and all of them are making. You know, prove, uh, significant improvements. You know, each week. How are you guys coming with uh, responsibilities offensively from a yeah. coaching staff going yeah. into the game? Have you guys figured out what everybody's role is yet? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, that's different, and it's different in a good, exciting way. You know, it challenges guys to get out of their comfort zone because we've been into such a good rhythm, certainly this year, when you got your play caller and everybody knows, and so now everybody's kind of had to adjust. And and so, um, you know, Matt Lubick will call a lot of it. Scott Huff's going to be right in there with the run game, and those guys are two really smart football players. And, um, you know, I think Scott Huff's not even – he's not your typical line coach where he just knows what's going on inside there. I mean, he – he, he knows this offense. He's been involved with it forever. And so we feel good there. And, and uh, we got a good plan. How much of your coaching hat have you had to put on during this? Well, game? yeah. Um, that's been another thing, you know. So, um, well, let me tell you that after the game, how well the quarterbacks play, whether how much I was involved. Um, but it's been fun. You know, it's been hectic. Um, it is nice to get in back into a position meeting room. Um, so I've enjoyed that. You had a 10th coach here coming up. Soon. Yeah. Um, are you going to add one? Anything you can tell us about that? Yeah. Um, we are going to add one. And um, still kind of working our plan and thinking about some different people and the exact position and all those type of things. Different couple different ways you could go. But... Um, so, you know, it's kind of been one thing at a time. We've talked about it. I've thought about it a lot. We've been so focused on this game. And... Um, and recruiting that this will kind of be the next thing that we figure out as we move forward but we've we've had a lot of discussions just haven't really arrived on exactly where we're going there jake said yesterday that it's time for the program to win a game like the fiesta Bowl. part of dallas Bowl is great but he, you know, i was going to put that he felt just to signify like that was step for the program i wonder if you kind of feel that way too yeah i mean this is going to be a these games i've you know i've been in a few these are hard games to win you, I mean, when you're playing teams like this, these are hard games. When you're playing the best in your league or you go to a bowl game like that, it's going to come down to a couple plays. And it all comes down to just details. These kids will play hard. They'll play physical. I mean, we know that. Um, but that's that's not going to be good enough to win against a team like Penn State. You're going to have to play your best. This is going to have to be our best football of the year. And these are hard to – it's easy to say that. Yeah, we do. But it's going to be – a lot of uh, a lot of good football to get this done. How much practice time will you guys get in that stadium? <coughs> Zero. We'll go. We'll go look at it um, the day before the game, yeah. but we don't practice in it at all. Where do you guys work out down there? I think we're. I think we're at Scottsdale Community College.
What do we need to know about Penn State, Chris? Yeah. You know, it's always it's the same thing every year when you go to a really big bowl game. You get excited. You don't know too much about a program. You know their name, and then you put the tape on, and you're like, "Oh, this is why this is why we're playing them." You know, they're 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 just really good in all three phases. You know, they score for over 40 points a game. They don't give up many points. And then on special teams, they have elite kick returners. You know, they, they really create things there. They're solid in their coverage units and all those type of things. And so um, the defense is, is very multiple in terms of pressures that they bring. They're all over the place. They create a lot of havoc for the defense. They can blow things up. Their D-line plays extremely hard, penetrators. Um, so they make it hard on an offense. And then um, their offense is... You know, Barkley, everybody talks about him, and he's obviously a rare and special talent. But McSurley, the quarterback, he is good. Like, he, he makes that thing go. I mean, he is hard to tackle, and he can throw, and he makes plays. And he's a, he's a competitor. I like that guy. So when it comes to Penn State secondary, it seems like there's a lot of active guys in terms of them breaking up passes, deflecting the whole nine. What for you stands out about their secondary? Well, I think the first thing is, is they're not going to give you a chance to sit back there and hold the ball. So that's any secondary best friend is just how they get after the quarterback. They get over three sacks a game. That's a lot. Um, and then they play tight coverage and they mix their coverages, you know, so they're getting after the quarterback, they're changing the pitcher and they cover tight. I mean, this is why they're one of the better defenses in the country. They play, they really like this defense to me just plays really well as a group. Something Fuller said yesterday when we spoke to him is against that secondary, they kind of force you into being impatient and they force you into making mistakes. I mean, is that something you see from secondaries often or does it kind of take a special group to kind of be that good to where that's their game plan and they do it that well? Well, um, I mean, I, I don't really think Penn State worries too much about the offense. They, they have a multiple defense and they just call it and run it and get to it. The thing that's real apparent is they're not going to give you anything. Sometimes when you get a real multiple defense with different blitzes and all these things, you'll get guys open. And because there's like, when you do a lot, there's a lot to think about. I think the thing that's unique about these guys is they do a lot and nobody's cut loose and nobody's free. I mean, you're going to have to make plays on these guys. And that's where I go back to my first statement. It is a detailed game. When you play at this level against these type of guys, you know, that's going to be open or that's going to be open and you got to go up and make a play for the ball. That's what we're getting ourselves into. It's going to be physical. This is really a physical team. And, you know, I'm anxious to see what we got. Chris Budabaker made the Pro Bowl with Arizona as a special teamer. What is that? Not, not surprising. You know, I think all, for you guys, it's not surprising either. I mean, that guy is a football player. He understands the importance of special teams. You know, same old thing. And you didn't go, you know, when he got drafted by those guys, he wasn't probably thinking for one second. You know, I'm going there to dominating special teams and he's you know one of the best in the in the league and he's awesome what do you think he meant to you just to be a part of that first class when you showed up here Looking yeah back how impactful that was to get him yeah i mean we've asked i mean there's you know i love buddha and yeah uh, i you know i think about that with some of these guys i mean he's just he's a football player he just loves it but he's just an awesome person i mean you just like to be around him you like to coach him i mean it's fun it's almost like you know it's just really I mean, that's what, that's what makes coaching really, really fun. You tell him to do something, he gets it. You know, you're never talking about, He's got, what's going on? You can play harder, you know? And effort is something sometimes that you do need a coach. I mean, it's hard to play this at this level of effort that we're talking about. And never once would you say that about Buddha. That Tommy Bahama shirt that you've been wearing for instance. You've been following me around? No, it's on Twitter. It's okay. I actually ordered one. <laughs> do, you, do you wear that only on recruiting trips or do you wear that only? I am not giving my re recruiting sartorial secrets away to you, Softy. Because if we start dressing alike, we got I got big problems. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I do have one. I'm kind of jumping back to recruiting. I mean, I know you said, hey, for you, 85 to 90% of the class is done. So when it comes to kind of recruiting and, and, and whatnot, like what is kind of the mission left? Is it just evaluating and seeing, hey, what can we add? Or are you guys really that pressed? Or I mean, how would you assess what it's going to be like between now and, and signing day for you? Well, there's still another guy or two that we have our eye on um, that we feel, you know, pretty good about. And we'll just kind of see how it goes. And go from there. 
Yeah. But you know, when you look at guys like Vita and getting those kind of awards, and yeah. you know, like Vita getting the Morris Trophy, things like that, how how much do you lean on those kinds of things when making a recruiting pitch in the house, or how much of it is the built for life? I mean, yeah, do you find a balance there. Or? I mean, I. Yeah, I don't really find myself talking that much about. I probably should, and and and, and I think our coaches would probably talk about it, and uh, and I think the kids probably know. Um, but I think it's just more about. I think that's all hype and all like smoke and mirrors. Yeah, I, I just like what does that have to do with you like coming here and what it has to do with like we have really good players that are as good as anybody in the country and we can coach you up to this level if you have that God-given potential in you so maybe that's what that has to do with but to me it's it's really about like it's not about the size of the stadium and it's not about all these flashy uniforms and we have all that we have the best of the best it's really about the, that's that's the that's the fun part of it but you know once you get here in about two weeks all that stuff wears off and like do you fit here what is that locker room like what is the heartbeat of the locker room how are these coaches going to coach you and treat you when this thing's over did you really get something more out of this than just football and that's what i end up talking about because that's what really matters and so, I mean, I, I really did. I mean, I forgot. I, I saw this yesterday. I forgot that Vita was the defensive player of the year in the conference. I honestly did. And I'm like, did I even say anything to Vita about that? That's pretty cool. So I don't know if I said anything to any recruits. I didn't even say anything to Vita. I think Vita knows you wanted I don't know. <laughs> did you guys tell him? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Can you just talk a little bit? When you were back in Boise State and you first got here, I think recruiting has changed a lot since then, especially having to offer kids a lot earlier. And a kid like the Jacob Sermon, he's been committed yep. to you for years. I don't mind offering kids early. I have two things with that. One, we're not offering kids just to offer them. We'll never do that. We're not throwing a bunch of mud to the wall see who sticks. That's what everybody else does. We're not doing that. Our lists are short, and we're going after the guys that fit us. So if we know a guy fits us, he's been in our backyard for a long time, so we're able to evaluate that. And then when we have a guy like that, I feel awkward and bad about it because I know when we get involved, then everybody's going to get involved just because we're involved before they even do any homework. And you can't tell me that that doesn't have an effect on a young kid's psyche for the next two years that everybody's recruiting them to death and telling them how great they, I think that's really hard. I wouldn't want that for my son because I think that that has a big effect in terms of like the world they live in, but it is what it is. And I think, you know, so many of these kids have good grounded parents that keep them focused on important things, but I think that's really hard. I think we take pride in being one of the teams that offers the least amount of scholars because we're not. We're not just throwing a bunch of offers out. We're going to go do our research and figure out who fits us, and it's going to mean something when it comes from Washington. But I don't have a problem offering guys early in terms of, like, holding back, but um, I, know, I know it can be a negative thing if not everybody that's surrounding that, that athlete, that student athlete, really has this thing in, pers you know, in check and, and going to do this thing the right way. It takes a lot of people to help this young guy get through this process. I mean, you appreciate a guy like Jacob who's been committed for two years, been solid, it seems like, and withstood kind of that recruiting. Yeah, program. no question. I mean, I pre I do. I appreciate a guy. That, and, and, you know, and, and we try to slow it down. We try, like, okay, we're going to offer you. And, I mean, sometimes it's a little bit awkward. No, I don't want you to commit. You know, it's no, go home. You know, it's like, because when you commit, we're really saying, like, if it was legal, you'd sign this paper. Like, you're done. You, you, you go, go look some other places. Go figure this out if this really is your place. And if it is, awesome. But now you're going to commit and you're going to have all these, you know, crazy grown football coaches for the next two years tell, you know, just <laughs> lying and saying whatever. And that is a hard thing for not only the kid, but the family. They don't know what to believe. And so it's a tough process. You know, it really is. And so, we we try to help that that whole thing so when you commit it means like you really you really are done but even with that being said it is hard to withstand all this craziness that comes their way so is, is there a story you can share with us that maybe the craziest thing you saw an opposing coach do you want to drop it well no yeah i would love to <laughs> but i'm not going to <laughs> Can you tell us we're not dropping the name? Yeah. I mean, don't get me started because I think there's so much garbage out there in terms of lying to kids and, 
and it's just it's wrong i think it gives our business a bad a bad name and you know you ever call other coaches on that stuff i have yeah, yeah. i have and you know it is what it is <laughs> merry christmas <laughs>